As a libertarian activist, one of the things that I've noticed, libertarians tend to be a little bit naive about is just the reality that we face from the enemy, so to speak, in organizing to challenge authority. And I know a lot of people are new to this. We have more new libertarians than ever before. And now with this built out beautiful version of Adam versus the man coming to you five days a week, we have more and more people coming into the movement. And it's so exciting to have this gateway for people to freedom back. And one of the things I don't think we talk about nearly enough within this movement is well, as I get it from the Libertarian Party of Florida purge.wordpress.com website, how to spot a political saboteur, provocateur, or spy, COINTEL Pro agent. And this is something that you'll see from the content of this story, just why we don't talk about it enough, because saboteurs, provocateurs, spies, COINTEL Pro agents, plants, are able to divert attention relatively easily, especially from the naive. I am doing this segment as the opener in my show today as a means of hopefully to some small degree inoculating our movement against this kind of subversion. And it is something that I just wish more people in our movement and more people in the United States in general, and this goes beyond the freedom movement, but to the broader activist community of America as a whole, really of the world, because America is just one example of this, but this is a thing that governments do that we don't talk about enough. We don't pay attention to enough. We don't question the narrative that we are given enough based on an understanding of how much reality is warped by these efforts. If you've never heard of COINTELPRO, that's counterintelligence program. Covered it significantly yesterday, but if you didn't catch that, go read the Wikipedia article. Just search Wikipedia for COINTELPRO. That's COINTELPRO, Counterintelligence Program. And this is the FBI program that was allegedly just in the 1956 to 1971 period when they got exposed. And then they just, they just went away and they stopped fucking with activists. <laughs> yeah, right. So these people are out there. And this is something that we see in the modern era as well. Not just in all the ways that we suspect, you know, do you think their, their techniques and their ability to keep things covert haven't just gotten better since the 70s? Yeah, of course they have. But even with that, we see local law enforcement <clears throat> during the anti-Iraq war movement, something that I was heavily involved with. We saw infiltrators, we saw dudes with buzz cuts, young cops from police departments going into like grannies for peace organizations where you go, hmm. Now, it's not the FBI agents, you know, because they have to pass some kind of intelligence test, but the local cops have to pass an intelligence test to prove their intelligence is low enough to be cops. And sometimes they screw up and reveal the game, like happened with the Occupy DC movement in, excuse me, well, the Occupy Wall Street movement, as it was Occupy DC, where we saw an undercover DC, no, was it Metropolitan Police Department? Yeah, MPD D Department police officer she was actually in a photo marching with the protesters facial uh you know recognition by activists matched her up with a profile on facebook and you go gee why is the city government infiltrating a protest group well this is something that they have done for a long time and actually taking the perspective of how do we protect ourselves how do we spot agents and a lot of times we're never going to know if someone is an agent or not. And I want to point out, as we did yesterday, this is not a condemnation of any individual. When the average American commits three felonies a day and can easily be threatened in, in digital world with, hey, we found kitty porn on your computer, or we're going to arrest you for this if you don't wear a white, it happens. We, we know that a lot of people get bullied into being informants plants, infiltrators, spies, all of these things. So if someone is acting like one, can you point the finger? No, but you can say, hey, look, you know, you're you're acting like you don't really have the interest of the, the organization at heart here. And it doesn't matter if they're a plant or not. You got to treat them like one. So have you ever been in an organization which said one thing and did the opposite? 
Many people may sense there is something wrong going on with an organization when it defies common sense and is counterproductive. An honest individual may not believe that anyone would deliberately create problems to stop any progress in an organization, but unfortunately, there are persons who want to stop other political grassroots activism progress. And by the way, that part of this is just politics. For those of us who were active in the Ron Paul campaigns in 2008 and 2012, we were certainly subject to a lot of this. And some Republican old party leadership would say that we were doing this to them. And in a sense, we were. This was, and, and you know, this is why, well, one of the reasons I don't like that strategy of, of libertarians, we're going to infiltrate the Republican Party. Well, we have our own party. Why, why, why do we have to be subversive? And, and, and it's not dishonest because because we've been always open about it. But it really is subverting the intent of the Republican Party, which, well, according to its bylaws is one thing, according to reality is the other thing of serve its corporate sponsors. But we're, we're going to directly combat that. Why would we do it from the inside when we can do it distinctly from the outside and win people over to our camp directly, honestly, openly, and intellectually with a persuasive case rather than one that is at least in this, this sort of weird way, fraudulent. So one way to neutralize a potential activist is to get them to be in a group that does all the wrong things. And this is something that, that I have not really adequately considered in even my common understanding. And for me, just going over all of this as a refresher, I'm thinking, oh, geez, yeah, that was fishy. Oh, yeah, that was, mm -hmm. okay. But to get people to be in a group that does the wrong things think about it like this say you have a a growing uh you know you, you have a grassroots militia movement in the united states right maybe, maybe uh maybe instead like let, let's let's say like this let's, let, let's look at 9 11. whatever your actual take on 9 11 is i mean we know the government story was absolute bullshit, and that it was used to create the global war on terror and I'll stop there, you, you get the point. But you had, in the wake of 9-11, a blossoming 9-11 truth movement, right? A lot of people went, eh, you know what, something's fishy here. And instead of having them join architects and engineers for 9-11 truth with Richard Gage and mounting a credible campaign to say, look, we, we need to question this. We need, we need to really have an honest, national conversation about this instead what you can do is you can raise some controlled opposition now in this case it's it's more alex jones himself rather than in, in organization info wars but alex jones really he got people involved you know he created an organization around him he got people to to do his protests and things like that and so that became the face of the 9 11 truth movement you got people to join an organization that does all the wrong things or at least weakens the movement renders it completely ineffective and you didn't have to do it with any infiltration or sabotage all you had to do was make sure that alex jones got really good distribution on am radio so why why do they do this one the message doesn't get out we see this a lot with libertarianism you know our message pure simple love respect to your fellow human beings adherence to the non-aggression principle the pledge you check a box for when you join the libertarian party i will not support the use of violence or coercion to achieve political or social goals, simple as that. Justice, ethics, and, and again, this is not just about the freedom movement. This is uh, the, the entire activist community, people who are engaged in, in reorganizing society or fighting injustice to make the world a better place. Two, a lot of time is wasted. Well, we've seen that. We'll come back to this. Three, the activist is frustrated and discouraged. Gee, have we seen any examples of that in our movement? I, oh man, I used to talk about burnout all the time. And I, you know, I, I know what keeps me going. And I, I know I'm able to think my way through all these hurdles thrown in my way and have confidence in the bigger vision that humanity is dancing, marching forward towards a voluntary society that is inevitable. And confidence in the message itself of nonviolence always being better than violence, of freedom being better than slavery. 
But I've seen a lot of people come and go. I've seen a lot of people burn out, frustrated, and discouraged. Four, nothing good is accomplished. FBI and police informers and infiltrators will infest any group and they have phony activist organizations established. Their purpose is to prevent any real political movement for civil change, justice, or peace in the United States and other countries. Agents come in small, medium, or large. They can be of any ethnic background. They can be male or female. And it's worth pointing out in this that there are cases where infiltrators on long-term missions will actually marry and have kids with activists. I'm not making this up. This has happened dozens of times, most notably in the UK and the animal rights and environmentalist movements. Crazy stories out there. Yeah. The actual size of the group or movement being infiltrated is irrelevant. It is the potential the movement has for becoming large, which brings on the spies and saboteurs. Now, you think about the Libertarian Party. Formed 1971, David Nolan's living room in his what, an apartment in Colorado, right? And for 50 years now, we're coming next year, next year, 50 year anniversary of the Libertarian Party. Going to be a lot of historical analysis here, a lot of looking back. How is it that our votes and membership have just, you know, some good big ups, very excited, and then some downs and some, and, and here we cruise along, never breaking through 5%. Why is that? Because we have the potential to overthrow the entire system, to overthrow the duopoly. Of course, we are going to have infiltrators doing these things. Agents use these tactics to slow things down, foul things up, destroy the movement, and keep tabs on activists. It is, the, it is the agent's job to keep the activist from quitting such a group, thus keeping him or her under control. In some situations to get control, the agent will tell the activist, you're dividing the movement. Here I have added the psychological reasons as to why this maneuver works to control people. This invites guilty feelings. Many people can be controlled by guilt. The agents begin relationships with activists behind a well-developed mask of dedication to the cause. Because of their often declared dedication and actions designed to prove this when they criticize the activist, he or she being truly dedicated to the movement becomes convinced that somehow any issues are their fault. Now, this might be more true, I think, in non-libertarian circles. Because libertarians have a much greater awareness of this. And this is why there's a section in our book, Freedom, as is right there. You see there on the screen, the Freedom logo right there. You see right there, you can download it for free at thefreedomline.com. There's a very important section in there called emotional freedom. And a lot of people question my inclusion of this and what is intended as a general libertarian conversion manifesto, but it really is important because not only do we in our personal lives emotionally manipulate each other constantly, but governments, leaders, organizers, saboteurs use that emotional manipulation. And if you don't have emotional freedom, if you don't have that maturity, that self-centeredness, uh, not self-centeredness, uh, that centeredness, <laughs> that Zen, right? That inner peace, then it is easy to emotionally manipulate you like an animal. And this is really, I think, the ultimate difference in what makes human consciousness special or intelligent life unique in that we have emotional responses to things. We, we are all subject as animals to external stimuli that create an emotional response, but it is our ability to have a separate consciousness that is an observation of this to decide what is our response to the response going to be rather than to sit in it and continue to be slaves to our environment, but to claim instead freedom of the mind, internal dominion over our emotions, and to say, yes, I am going to have these emotional reactions. It's not that I'm some perfect Buddhist monk sitting in a mountain cave who has absolute mastery of all emotions at all times. No, but to have the control, the self-control, to have uh, rich emotions in your life, to have those responses and those reactions, but to from a higher consciousness, 
control your mind, your attitude at all times. That is ultimate freedom. And that is yours whenever you claim it. And that prevents you from being manipulated by, for example, an agent who will tell the activist, you're a leader. This is designed to enhance the activist's self-esteem, his or her nar narcissistic admiration of his or her own activist altruistic intentions increase as he or she identifies with and consciously admires the altruistic declarations of the agent which are deliberately set up to mirror those of the activist. Now, there are a lot of people who in the libertarian movement are here because we are in some ways victims, downtrodden, the square pegs and the round holes, the rebels, the revolutionaries. We are more often the victims of government than its beneficiaries. We are not so often the captains of the football teams or the cheerleading squads but the rejects the losers and the outcasts not often narcissists but often seeking egoic compensation for psychological injury and that also makes us prone to manipulation. So, first, skipping ahead here, the agent's expression of such simulated affects may be quite compelling to the observer and difficult to distinguish from deep emotion. It can usually be identified by two events, however. First, the activist who has analyzed his or her own narcissistic roots and is aware of his or her own potential for being emotionally hooked, will be able to remain cool and unaffected by such emotional outpourings by the agent. As a result of this unaffected cool attitude, the second event will occur. The agent will recompensate much too quickly following such an effective expression, leaving the activist with the impression that the play has ended, the curtain has fallen, and the imposture for the moment has finished. The agent will then move quickly to another activist slash victim. The fact is the movement doesn't need leaders. It needs movers. Follow the leader is a waste of time. Now, this is not to say that we cannot have specialization of labor and of leadership in certain things. But the core of our message as libertarians must include this component. To be free, you must be your own leader. You must embrace that. And when you do, it will be much more difficult for you to be taken advantage of. When we build other people up in our movement, when we support each other at the deepest levels possible, as a community, as a family, we can make each other impervious. Now, this is something I have seen on a lot of ways in my own activism. Some agents take on a pushy, arrogant, or defensive manner. A good agent will want to meet as often as possible. He or she will talk a lot and say little. One can expect an onslaught of long, unresolved discussions. One, to disrupt the agenda, to sidetrack the discussion, to interrupt repeatedly, to feign ignorance, to make an unfounded accusation against the person. Now, I've seen this a lot in the Libertarian Party. We've seen a lot of obstructivism, obstructionism in Libertarian Party conventions, even at the National Convention. I've heard people described as good at, good at running meetings. I've yet to see very many who really are truly good at running meetings, there are a handful. Uh, I won't single them out here. But uh, running a meeting doesn't mean being able to talk about Robert's Rules of Order for two hours or being able to conduct a conversation in a way that everybody is happy and feels that uh, they, they had their voices heard. No, it means actually leading and getting things done to actually keep an organization on agenda, getting things done, not getting sidetracked. We see this a lot. Saboteurs 
Some saboteurs pretend to be activists. She or he will one write encyclopedia flyers in the present day websites. And we've seen some of this. The drowning people in comments on Facebook, I think, is an even more recent example of this, where you know this is someone who has way too much time on their hands to engage in these kinds of flame wars and extended arguments online kind of makes you wonder. Well, then they'll say, well, I work three jobs and I am so extra committed to the cause. Why don't you? Well, what are you doing? Dragging people down into Facebook flame wars? Print flyers in English only? Eh. Have demonstrations in places where no one cares? Yeah. Solicit funding from rich people instead of grassroots support? Eh, you can do both. Display banners with too many words that are confusing, confuse issues, make the wrong demands, compromise the goal. Have endless discussions that waste everyone's time. The agent may accompany the endless discussions with drinking, pot smoking, or other amusements to slow down the activist's work. I'm sure you've been in meetings where someone has said, well, come on, let's let's relax, let's not over, let's, just, let's make sure we're taking care of each other. And then when all you do is take care of each other, the mission does not get accomplished. Provocateurs want to establish leaders to set them up for a fall in order to stop the movement, suggest doing foolish, illegal things to get the activists in, pro in trouble. Encourage militant militancy. Want to taunt the authorities. Attempt to make the activists compromise their values. Attempt to instigate violence. Activism ought to always be nonviolent. Absolutely. Seven. Attempt to provoke revolt among people who are ill-prepared to deal with the reaction of the authorities to such violence. Informants want everyone to sign up and sign in and sign everything. Ask a lot of questions. Gathering data. Want to know what events the activist is planning to attend. Attempt to make the activist defend him or herself, identify his or her beliefs, goals, and level of commitment. Recruiting legitimate activists do not subject people to hours of persuasive dialogue. Their actions, beliefs, and goals speak for themselves. Groups that do recruit are missionaries, military, and fake political parties or movements set up by agents. Now, I don't know about this particular thing. Yes, there's a point of uh, recruiting for everything, but you think about how it is done. Surveillance. Always assume that you are under surveillance. Absolutely, especially in the digital era. You have a cell phone. You are being tracked. None of your digital communications are secure. This is why my policy has always been to do everything in the open with as much transparency as possible, to not do anything in secret that I wouldn't do in the open, to not say anything in a private conversation that I wouldn't mind having being made public. The only encryption that you can have confidence in is end-to-end -end offline with air gaps. So the last section here, scare tactics, they use them. Such tactics include slander, defamation, threats, getting close to disaffected or minimally committed fellow activists to persuade them via psychological tactics described above to turn against the movement and give false testimony against their former compatriots. They will plant illegal substances on the activists and set up an arrest, plant false information, set up exposure, send incriminating letters in their name, and more, they will do whatever society will allow. This booklet is in no in no way covers all the ways agents use to sabotage the lives of sincere and dedicated activists. If an agent is exposed, he or she will be transferred or replaced. COINTELPRO is still in operation today under a different codename. It is no longer placed on paper where it can be discovered through the Freedom of Information Act. The FBI counterintelligence program stated purpose to expose, disrupt, misdirect, discredit, and otherwise neutralize individuals who the FBI categorized as opposed to the national interest. National security means the FBI security from the people ever finding out the vicious things it does in violation of people's civil liberties. This is what we are up against. This is not inside baseball. This is something not only every activist needs to know, but every single American. This is what your government is doing to prevent progress, to hold America back from getting better, from hearing from people who might have a better way of doing things, from people who want to point out the injustices in the world. This is how they perpetuate evil, and we all need to be aware of it.